Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylipsonstudios.co.uk and welcome back to the Personas Symphonic Orchestra Cities, episode number four, I believe. Having done overview episode one, strings episode two, and uh, brass episode three, so yes, this would be episode four. So, in today's episode we are looking at woodwinds. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is such a lot to look at with the woodwinds section. Um, I am only going to really have time in the limits of this video to give you an overview of the woodwind section. Um, so, to be honest, the best thing you can do is, is kind of listen to what you get here and then go and purchase this um, add-on for yourself and explore, basically. Because there are... For each of the instruments, there are loads of key switches, and I'm going to show you that just now. So we're going to start. Let's open the GUI. We're going to start with the flute and what that sounds like, and there are quite a few different instruments. I'll just quickly show you what you get. You get alto flute, bass clarinet, bass flute, bassoon, clarinet, clarinet section, a contra bassoon, um, English horn, otherwise known as a cor anglais, uh, flute, as I've said, flute section, oboe, and piccolo. And these are all awesome. I've checked all of these sounds out. They are absolutely amazing quality samples that you get. So, And they sound super realistic. So flute is what we're going to start with. And we will take it from there. So this is what the flute sounds like. And as you can see, you have a whole octave worth. In fact, you have two octaves, sorry, worth of... Uh, key switches, because there are lots of ornaments and decorations to notes that you've got here, and runs and pickups and all sorts, which are going to be invaluable to you regardless of what kind of style of music you write. Um, if you're writing strictly orchestral music in a kind of um, post-romantic kind of style, um, as you would for a film, say, like uh, the way that uh, John Williams writes. He writes in a very kind of Holstein, um, post-romantic, early 20th century kind of style. That's his his kind of signature sound, if you like. Um, or if you're writing in a kind of Baroque kind of way, then all these key switches are going to be just as useful for you. I tend to use this add-on uh, in a more contemporary way. So um, I will use this to kind of uh, decorate uh, a popular style song or a jazz style song um, to basically just add some extra textures. So this is just as useful for that kind of thing as well. So let's take a listen and let's take a look. So this is the flute. Now, as I say, you get a whole bunch of key switches. So let's have a look at just a few of them. So we have good old flutter tonguing. And the great thing about this is you can pitch bend it as well. which is great fun. So that's flutter tonguing. You also get some trills. Again, you can harmonize these. Which sounds just wonderful. Uh, you get also some crescendos. So this one is a, a crescendo from piano to forte slowly. Um, you also get some ornaments as well. So this is kind of like a major style ornament, which is basically a um, a turn in the post-romantic style, which is basically the note itself, the note above, the note itself, the note below, the note itself. Again, sounds really great harmonized.
very, 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 very useful. Uh, again, you've got slow crescendo, and then this one, diminuendos, back to piano. Which is very, very nice. And you get that lovely vibrato and breath control going on there. This is a minor turn. Very, very useful and pleasant to listen to. Uh, you get another crescendo. This one's a crescendo to forte. Really useful stuff here. Uh, grace notes are always really good fun. Uh, what else we got here? We've got a grace note up, uh, grace note down, major. So basically a whole tone interval. And then this one is a minor interval. Semitone. What else do we have here? We have... Oh, these are the runs. These are great. Uh, so you have a major run. Which is great. You can do this in octaves and it sounds wonderful. Which is just a thing of beauty. And you have uh, a run down in major. So you could alternate those two. You could have the run up and then the run down. Um, what else do we have here? And a minor run. Lovely. Uh, run down in the minor. Lovely. Uh, mordance. Mordance is just another ornament, which is basically the note, the note, the note itself, the note above, and then back to the note itself. Very, very nice. Very useful. Minor mordant. Kind of a bit more of a contemporary kind of use of that mordant there. Uh, mordant down up. So that, it says mordant down up, but that's basically what you would call an inverse mordant. Uh, and then this one is a, is a down up minor, which is kind of like a semitone interval. Again, all really useful stuff. So there's loads and loads of key switches there just for the flutes on their own. All right, let's look at something else. So let's take a look at alto flute. It's kind of like the flute, but lower. Uh, let's see, clarinets. Clarinets are nice. So you get individual clarinets plus a clarinet section. And again, you have absolutely loads of key switches. You've probably got more key switches here than uh, you do on the flute, actually. So lots of lots of different grace uh, no, um, options, and then you have a glissando option, which of course makes you instantly think of Rhapsody in Blue by George Gershwin. <laughs> That's just fantastic. I love it. And then you've got a nice little pickup figure. Really, really cool. Um, and then you've got a whole bunch of other grace notes. Uh, these are all really cool. And then trills, of course. 
Cool thing about this particular one here, you can actually hear the keys. Somebody forgot to pad, uh, repad those keys. <laughs> oh, nice, nice little uh, crescendo thing going on there. Oh, ho, 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 perfect. Love it. Uh, and then staccato. Which does sound a little bit like a car horn. Especially if you play two notes together. <laughs> uh, and then you've got your classic ordinary sustain. Oh, it sounds so rich and warm and lovely. <laughs> clarinet is just awesome. And as I say, you get a clarinet section as well, um, which has its own bunch of key switches. Uh, grace notes. You got runs as well for a section. Uh, oh, wrong. Playing area where? Is it? <laughs> Love that. That is just epic. And then run down, of course. <laughs> you could just have hours of fun just playing with the key switches. Uh, that's how I've registered that. Absolutely beautiful. Let's have a look at some of the more rare instruments, like the bass flute. Uh, bass flute basically looks like a flute, but the headstock is kind of... It, it turns a corner and goes back on itself. Um, because otherwise it'd be so long you wouldn't actually be able to reach the keys. Um, so that's why the headstock kind of has a U-bend to it, if you ever get to see one. So this picture here is completely misleading, because it doesn't look like that at all. Um, smaller range of key switches here, mostly because the instrument is a little bit unwieldy, should we say. You get some special effects here. So this is kind of a more sort of special effectsy instrument. So very nice, sounds very rich, especially that nice low note. So that's the bass flute. Uh, alto flute is also relatively uncommon. Holst used them quite a lot, Stravinsky used them quite a lot um, as a way of kind of adding a little bit of extra weight to a flute section. So let's check out the contrabassoon, which is like a bassoon but lower, has a much lower register. Sounds a little bit farty down at, at the very bottom. Again, you've got uh, a small selection of different um, key switches. Uh, 
So that's the contra bassoon. Very nice, very rich down low. English horn. Now this instrument, if you've ever seen the real thing, is actually quite hard to play. But that sounds absolutely glorious. Then you got some different crescendos and some grace notes. Which are always very useful. Staccato trills. Um, we don't have any of those runs, I don't think. Do we? No, we don't. No runs. But, again... Useful key switches. They've done a great job with all these qui, uh, qui, all of these key switches. Speak English, boy. Uh, so that's the beautiful English horn, and related to the English horn, um, by reason of it being a double reed instrument, is the oboe. The oboe is a beautiful instrument, um, but it is extremely hard to play because it is a double reed instrument, and the reed is ever so tiny. So this is what the regular sustain sound sounds like. It's a beautiful sound. You've got a good bunch of key switches here, which are worth taking a, a little look at. Most of them are kind of grace notes. You've got some crescendos. Very, very nice. Very useful. So lots of key switches there. And of course the piccolo, the diminutive relative of the flute. It can go ridiculously high. Uh, which is why it is much loved because it can um, it can be quite piercing and it can also double anything that you've got going on in your strings section. So there's plenty of grace notes and mordants and some runs as well because piccolos play lots of fast parts quite often. So those runs are going to be invaluable. And then you've got pickups into different notes. So all of those are really going to be extremely handy for any contemporary orchestral writing that you might want to do, because that's really where the pic piccolo is. That's where their specialty is, is playing those runs. And trills as well. If I can find, a tr if I find some trills. Let's see. Trills, trills. Here we go. So if you've ever seen a marching band, you'll have seen piccolos um, or a, a, a related instrument um, to the piccolo being played quite a lot. And oftentimes they're playing trills a lot of the time. So um, this is going to be perfect for that. All right. So we've had a good little look at the uh, woodwind section. And um, for the intro music, you will have heard some of those woodwind instruments in action I had flutes, alto flutes, clarinets a bass clarinet uh, and um, a little bit of a rhythm section as well 
Um, but it just gave you an idea of what you can do with these uh, instruments and how you can make them work in a variety of different settings, classical or contemporary pop music. Uh, the choice is yours, how you do it. So until next time, bye for now. <laughs>